What's up, everybody? Hi, Stationaries. What's good? Uh, today was the State of Play July 2021 reveal, I guess is the best way to say it. <laughs> For Sony, like we've been waiting to see what Sony was going was going to be up to this summer and deliver to us. Given that we are weeks out of uh, E3 and also the uh, what was that the uh, the kickoff for summer game Sum summer, summer game, game fest, fest. which yes. still has about another fourteen days, you know, of, of content supposedly coming out and stuff like that. But yeah, we were all wait ready and waiting to see what Sony's going to do. Now, as a quick disclaimer, as a quick uh, spoiler alert, there is no Horizon Zero Dawn, there is no God of War. If you didn't. So if you didn't catch that memo, like we're here to just re reiterate that for you. But uh, with me tonight, I've got, of course, uh, Eddie V. Hello, everybody. I've got Josh Finney. Yo, 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 making my return. <laughs> <laughs> and PlayStation Doctor Austin. Hey, what's up? Hey. I'm sick. I'm sick of some of these games that they show. <laughs> <laughs> And well, you if know, if Deathloop gets delayed again, I swear to God, I'm not playing it. I well, swear to God. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you know what? You guys go uh, ahead and talk about it. Like, 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 how how do you guys feel overall about this uh, state of play? Oh, uh, so let me start first. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, I I thoroughly enjoyed the state of play. I like what Sony did. You know, you know, letting developers come in and talk about some of their games, presenting a variety of games that would be hitting for PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five um uh fans uh, i like the fact that they are kind of showing what they're doing for their fall lineup so we could get an idea of what we do like um and we could what we could plan to purchase um how they show more some of the indie games and some of their big title games getting uh and really death stranding i i will say with the director's cut i do like the fact that they're adding a lot to this game with new gameplay new missions and everything so it really feels like a director's cut compared to what ghost of Tsushima would be um the stuff that we heard about that but i thoroughly i thoroughly enjoyed this one i like how they started off with uh moss book two um because we for a lot of people even who don't own psvr they really like how moss looked when it first came out they thought it was charming and it was a nice way to actually introduce uh introduce the show so um but i'll let you guys talk i like i said i thoroughly enjoyed it um i'm gonna say i'm gonna say this like with the death Stranding direct director's cut edition coming out like it's 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 typical hideo kojima fashion look at look at look at all the director's cuts of the the, of the metal gear solid games that, that have come mm -hmm. out over the years this is this is typical hideo kojima so you know like i i'm starting to realize that you know gamers really shouldn't be upset when like you know there's a definitive edition of a hideo kojima game coming out because that's that's the way it is technically you know like you like if you're if you're if you're fanboy enough that you want that you want to buy it day one, you know, then I'm gonna say don't really complain, you know, and when um when a director's cut edition or definitive edition comes out because that's mm -hmm. kind of how it is, and also and also like a lot of times like these Japanese uh, the Japanese developed games and stuff like that, there's always a definitive edition or or director's cut. Look at mm -hmm. look at how people are upset right now about the uh, Ninja Gaiden trilogy. And how like the black editions aren't being are you know aren't being put onto that collection you know so you're mm. you're getting the slightly inferior game is and it's like yeah you know uh, sure. and that one is across all three of them yep exactly and um okay so Josh uh, go ahead unload <laughs> uh, I'm not really gonna unload I just uh, I kind of have the opposite opinion of Ed I was pretty let down by this. And I didn't like. I came into this with pretty low expectations to begin with. After they said we have nine minutes of Death Loop to show you in a thirty-minute show, um, I basically figured that would be Death Loop. We'd probably get Kenna Bridge of Spirits, and then you know, like maybe fifteen minutes of Indies. And I was down for that. I was totally cool with it. Completely fine with not getting any more Horizon after we got the uh, dedicated fifteen minutes state of play back in May for it. Mm -hmm. It's just, and I, re I recognize that some people are pretty excited. Like, uh, I know a lot of people that I follow are really excited for Sifu. Uh, I frankly had no idea what Moss was. Uh, I'm just totally, completely out in, uh, out of what's on PSVR at this point. But as far as things go that I'm interested in, there was almost nothing. And that doesn't mean it's a bad show. But, like, for me personally, it's like I wanted a little bit more. I, I said before we got started... I was really hoping to see some more uh, of Kenna, of Solar Ash, uh, maybe Little Devil Inside. That game's kind of gone radio silent since last year. You know, these games that we had heard about for 2001, wait, 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 2021. 
Wait, didn't I just? I thought I just saw some on Devil Inside. Didn't I see? Something? I I I, like I heard a night or two that it was supposed to come out on the thirtieth of this month, but I've still seen nothing oh, new. On that oh oh oh! Actually, never mind. I know I know where I saw that. I was I was on um I was on Game Rink's uh, YouTube. Yeah, uh, uh, they had a they had a games look out for in the fall, and um and that's where I saw mm. that. Okay, so yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, just, I think I think back to like a lot of the indies that we got announced last year. Uh, Stray was a game I was really hoping to see again. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High is one. Like the indies that PlayStation puts in their shows, they put in there for a reason. They don't really do montages anymore with these digital presentations. It's like, hey, we feel like this is worthy of two or three minutes slot mm-hmm. in our shows. And then those games have all just like kind of, with the exception of Solar Ash, kind of gone quiet. And so personally, selfishly, I wanted to see more of those before announcing other things. And just these, it was like, okay, I, I'm excited. Like the the new shooter that's in early access today from the uh, Predator Hunting Grounds team. Uh, um, I'm Ar- not liking uh, out the name. Uh, arcade, uh, arcade, Ar- 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 arcade Again? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, I looked at that and I was like, okay, so it's like Fortnite and Borderlands PvP? Right. Dot. Not gonna play this. I play enough shooters as it is. But <laughs> yeah. good I'm, for you if you're excited for it. I think it's the Aerial Night kind of vibe that I got for it. It's, it seems like it's a uh, mm-hmm. with the trailer music with the hip hop thing kind of yeah, kind mean, of thing. That, and that, that's fine. I'm just like you know, I play a lot of shooters. This didn't really do anything to distinguish itself for me. And that studio is like really hit and miss in my opinion. So I mean, it's not a bad show, but it's like kind of a solid C, bordering on a C minus for me, frankly. I'll give my I'll give my rating. So just I mean, as, as a general thought, Austin. Mm-hmm. I so I we're gonna get into each game, so I don't want to mm-hmm. dive too much into the games because I've got a big opinions on most of them. But, <laughs> but yeah, this was uh, I'm with Josh. I was really hoping to see Little Devil Inside, Stray, all these games that was at the PS5 reveal. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the big PS5 event that we just haven't heard anything about Even the them. September yeah. event. Yeah. Yeah, like we just, I don't know. There's a lot of games here that um, might interest people. It's just not up my alley. And this was already, you know, this was about Deathloop. This is the big one, which we knew was going to happen. We knew Mm -hmm. Deathloop was going to get its own event. Deathloop is not my type of game either. I think I might like this more than Dishonored, but I don't like Dishonored. So that's why, like, this game is like, I don't know how I really feel about this one yet. Um, But I, I will say, like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't seem, I think a lot of people were expecting this to be a pretty big one, but as soon as you saw the 30 minute mark and nine minutes of death live, like you knew it wasn't going to be that big. Yeah. And then we're like, well, maybe we'll see some of the indies that a lot of people have been clamoring about. And we didn't see it and we didn't see any more Kenna. And I'm hoping mm-hmm. that it's still coming out next month, but that's got me a little worried. Like is Kenna going to get its own event. I don't think so. Well, I, I don't mean, think it'd be so either. Kind of weird if it did. They'll so probably, I feel like they'll probably drop a new trailer. It just won't be state of play, I, I think. Right. I, I, right. I, I kind of want to piggyback off that comment about Kenna, though. Like, you know, I said I felt like it was going to have a bigger show, and like, if I were if I were at Sony, and I was not confident that my major title for the fall Horizon was going to make it out this fall without like excessive crunch and potentially like you know damning reports and things like that maybe like even a glitched out game which we don't see a whole lot from sony but definitely in the work from home era anything is possible rising cases in europe etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. i would want to double down on and they have doubled down and tripled down on death loop they're clearly positioning death loop to be like one of their big draws this fall and this yeah. holiday which I- is smart <laughs> to do with an arcane game but I would also like I would lean in. They've had great success in the past of leaning into these these games that are they're technically indie, but they have clearly a triple A feel to them, like Kenna. I would right. be wanting to lean into that. I mean, you never know when something could be a surprise hit. And after they put so much emphasis on it at the reveal event at uh I think last September they showed it again. They showed it in March, and we talked uh, briefly at the beginning how it was a Tribeca. This is your probably your last chance to get that in front of a major worldwide audience. Yeah, and I'm I'm just shocked that it wasn't there. That looks like the kind of feel good game that will appeal to everybody in some way. Like you like mm-hmm. Pixar movies, this is the game for you. I'm I'm gonna I want to I want to I want to go back on um on uh mm-hmm. on, crap uh <laughs> I lost I lost it yeah uh, definitely. Well, 
Uh, yeah, Deathloop. Okay, yeah, I wanted to go back on Deathloop for a second. I think the reason why I think the reason why like it's getting so much, so much, so much push, so much airplay right now, mm -hmm. you know, as far as Sony's concerned, is because this is the this is technically one of the last games from Bethesda that we're <laughs> that we're gonna see like yeah. debut on a PlayStation console. So I think that's one of the reasons why like Deathloop is just getting getting seriously pimped right now, you know, and and I can't really fault them for that because you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if Deathloop doesn't do what it's supposed to do, like people are going to lose faith in Bethesda because of the fact is is because of the fact that they're going to leave it on a sour note that, that a game came out first on the PlayStation and it wasn't that good. Yeah. Well, I I, I think that maybe oh. PlayStation is hoping that hey, if Deathloop sells really really well maybe bethesda will will give us maybe xbox will let us have a shot at selling some of their games uh even if it's like a time thing i know xbox has pretty much doubled down on that as far as like bethesda's yeah. coming yeah. here you, you know, i'm I, sorry I, i'm I, gonna reiterate a point that i've made a couple of times on this show you don't pay 7.5 billion dollars to not say it's all exclusive <laughs> right like, right we, we, but, i'm gonna i'm gonna invoke the the, the infamous don matrick we have a box for you it's called the Xbox Series S, or it's called your iPad and fifteen dollars a month for Xbox Game Pass TM. Yep. Right. <laughs> right, but what I'm saying is <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, just, like, I get what you're getting at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the new Xbox, um the only, the only reason why I'm saying that is because a lot of people have been speculating on uh Scarlet Nexus. Like Xbox had a lot of to do with the marketing of Scarlet Nexus. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not selling there. And while that is a, you know, it's more of a Japanese game that's oh, normally yeah. going to sell on PlayStation anyway. I wonder if if the sales were big enough, would that convince like, hey, there's, cause and there's people that are like, th this is what I had to come to terms with today, and I was like, hey, so I would play on Xbox because I already pay for Game Pass anyway. Right. But what if I wanted Starfield on disc? Like, what if I want that extra copy? I would feel stupid buying an Xbox disc when i already had the game on game pass mm -hmm. i would pay the 70 dollars just to have it on playstation and to have it on game pass like i would play both like i wonder if that's a thing that crossed their mind later a double um, dip, the different form yeah, of double like, dipping try to double dip people like there's no way that starfield is coming out day one on place this is not gonna happen but if, if, if it's a if year a game or like two that were, yeah, yeah. If it, it, hypothetically if you were to do it you release it with all the dlc like two three years mm -hmm. down the line right, right. yeah after you have exhausted it but i mean at the same time like i feel like they're one of the few like not obviously not third party anymore but we saw when oblivion was exclusive to xbox for the first year was out simply because ps3 wasn't there that drove the adoption of 360s right. like that drove right. a generation and i can't help but think that like a lot of the people doubling down said i'm not buying an xbox just to play bethesda games all right you come talk to me when we see starfield and we see elder Scrolls 6 and we see fallout 5 you you come back and talk to me then you you come back and talk to I, me I, I, well, I might be I, I, i'm by in the same it. position right like i pay, I pay <laughs> for game pass and i'm like not to derail this into an xbox combo but like, i i pay for it but i'm still going to buy copies of halo infinite and starfield for example because i love those teams I'm gonna buy them to have on my on my shelf, and I'm gonna love and cherish them until physical media is buried in the ground with me. Well, right. this well, this is gonna well. Let me let me say this, and then we're gonna then we're gonna start recapping some of these games. <clears throat> I feel like with this whole Xbox, Bethesda, Sony, you know, all 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 this stuff that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be a true test of where your demographics lie. We spoke about this mm -hmm. on Tuesday night's Crossroads show. Like, mm -hmm. demographics demographics do not lie. This is why certain people only buy games on Nintendo. This is why certain people only buy games on Xbox. This is why certain people only buy games on PlayStation. I think this whole breakdown of the whole Bethesda thing, you know, and it being on Xbox, this is going to show where our demographics are at. Are people going to buy Game Pass or are they going to buy an Xbox console? Because let's look at it this way. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people have a very, a lot of gamers, a lot of, of gamers who cropped up in, let's say, the, the 2000s. We have mm -hmm. a very, we have a very storied history with Bethesda, whether it's, whether it's Elder right. Scrolls, whether it's, whether it's um, Fallout, it does not matter. Like they're like people have it's like really Fallout Three and Skyrim, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're gonna see we're gonna see what what people are are thinking, what people are doing about this. But let's go ahead and start talking about these games because the first game that 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 aired tonight on the state of play was Moss Two, which is a PSVR game coming to the PS Five. Uh, guys, what's your thoughts on this? 
Hmm. I love it. It looks beautiful. And I love the fact that it has... This one is more presentable than the first moss because when you seen the first moss you was into it because of it visually this one looks very impressive um you know it looks very charming i think a lot of people who have a psvr because they they said the first one was pretty good um they just wish that it was a little bit longer um this one looked like they have more uh, ideas um placed in the game so i i enjoyed it I, i'm surprised that it uh that is kind of, I feel like it's going to be the debut game of the PSVR for PS5, which is a good, strong move on Sony's part because a lot of people did enjoy uh, the first game. So I thought it was a good way to open it up. All right, Josh, how you feeling? Uh, I like it. For someone who doesn't know what Moss is, like I saw my timeline was exploding like, oh my God, Moss, Moss, it's Moss too. And I'm like, I- I have what no the idea fuck? About this game. What, where does it say <laughs> Moss? Because I don't know what I don't know who this fucking mouse is. The closest thing to a mouse with a sword that I've seen is fucking Tunic. Like, did Tunic get a makeover in the three weeks since so, I played it? So they show Moss at uh, I think 2016's E3 for PS4. Oh. Bro, I have slept in the five years. Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> five five years ago, that's, that's what I thought you guys. Hold on, would, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ed. What what consoles were it were it on? And was it a VR it game already, then? It was only on PS4. And was it a VR game? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It was see, at Sony's conference. They're see, the ones that showed it. Austin and I, we're we're not really VR players, so I guarantee you this one kind of flew over our well, head. Well, even, even well not, not even being as VR. Actually, players, wait, wait, Austin, wait. I'm, I'm sorry, Austin. I didn't mean to speak for you. Uh, I because I, I just I, say, I just remember you had the P, you had PSVR one, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Not not nothing to do with PSVR. I just thought you guys would remember it because they showed it at a PlayStation E3 event. That's where this game got all the notoriety because it was at PlayStation's E3 event. So that's why I thought you guys would remember it uh, or anything about the series. So I'm I'm just shocked like that you guys didn't know. Okay. I've sold well, a lot. I well, drink a lot. I've gone to therapy <laughs> since then. I don't remember this. Well, here's well, well here's here's my thing. Like 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 VR VR does not really tickle my fancy. Like uh like no. I like I, I I I wear glasses. I have astigmatism in both eyes and stuff like that. I have a hard time. I have a hard time with spatial density when something's like right on my face like that. So it's not a good time for me. Um, so yeah, I would have, I would have already for, forgotten about this game. Like the moment they had, they had announced it, like, I'm probably going to forget about the. Well, if it wasn't the fact that I host Crossroads, which is a PlayStation show, I probably would already forget about this game by tomorrow morning when Monster Hunter Stories 2 comes out. <laughs> I think it looks really cool though. Like this looks like a cool game. I'm curious to see how it plays in VR. So I was kind of left wondering about that, but, uh. Yeah, I mean, I could dig it. This, this it looks like a kind of like lighthearted, whimsical platformer, and then everybody in on my time was like, "Oh, it's it's not like it, it's so heartfelt. It's gonna pull at your heartstrings." I'm like, "Oh fuck, I can't do another cute platformer that does that." that that's for the furries. But, <laughs> you know. yeah. Austin, Austin, what's your, so, what's your thoughts? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I am a day one PSVR buyer. Okay. And I loved my VR. And Moss is one of the best games on VR, if not the best game on oh, PlayStation for real. VR. Oh, for real. That being said, why in the world are you showing this now when you have nothing to show about the new updated PSVR? No one is talking about PSVR right now. No Nobody. One. This is not, not a soul. Not a single person. And this game... So this, so all right, Moss Two comes out. Okay, that gets everyone who's still playing their VR, all the dedicated people to VR, like, mm. awesome, that's cool. But here's the thing: we don't have a new VR headset, so that doesn't make it, it doesn't make it interesting. And it is on PC as well. It did come to Oculus and oh, it did. probably Five as well. Yeah. Um, but this, this is why would you show this now? I think I think to I think just to you know instead of just like starting the show I think to give people an idea of this is what you're going to be seeing with the next PSVR just giving them an idea something yeah but this would have been much cooler like when they show the PSVR too like Mm -hmm. all right all our dedicated fans you know what this game is Uh, Moss Two that would got people more excited for it this Uh, may be rather than just a random event. This may be the only VR game that's like f- way in development, over than everything else that they got planned to announce. 
Um, I'm I'm gonna say no because London Studios. This is I. They've been working on this for a while. I'm pretty sure that's all they've been working on is. Uh, well, yeah, but I think other games. VR probably other VR games they got for PS5. They probably not ready to show. They probably get in there ready to do a trailer thing and save it for another state of play. Because um, right. I think I, I just don't understand why you should this game now. Like, like I don't, you know, you don't have to show anything else. But mm-hmm. like, why are you showing this? Like, this is not a VR event. You know what kind of what what kind of stood out to me is like that was the only VR game they showed the state of play. I feel like they should have held yeah. on to this for an, a state of play that's centered around PSVR, which I think is right. going to be coming right. in. Which I think is probably going to be coming in later on in the year. I well, think that's why I said they just probably want to give an idea of what it was going to, what the game's going to look like on PSVR. Well, um, it just, it just it, it, I can agree with Austin. It feels kind of nonsensical that they showed that they showed a PSVR game. You know, when we still don't know what the PSVR hardware looks like yet. We don't even know what yeah. the pricing is going to be yet. You know, so we don't even, we we don't even, well. We it has not been one hundred percent confirmed that you will have to buy new hardware for it because like we don't know if the PS Move is still going to be implemented or if it's just going to mm-hmm. be brand new built from the ground up tech. Yeah, this and, and like... I'm gonna be honest. Oh, sorry, Ma, well, real quick, just Moss Two is just not someone like me who has not picked up their VR in a year since mm-hmm. Iron Man VR. Actually, it might be longer than a year now since Iron Man VR came out. It's not going to get me to drag it back out. This is not the game to do it. Now, this might be the game to get me to be excited for PS4 VR 2. But this is not the one to get me to drag out my PSVR back out. They're, I wonder, I, I think my question is would they do also a PS4 version? And would this be like the last VR game for the PS VR for PlayStation 4? If I'm not mistaken, Sony's, Sony's all but abandoned PSVR, the, the mm-hmm. PS4 version, if I'm not mistaken. This, this feels like the first. They and they weren't explicitly saying it yet, and like that's yeah, early in development, things like that. Like this feels like it may be the first PSVR two game, and just like because they didn't explicitly say when it was coming out. This feels like yeah. a hey, we're gonna give you a tease, and we'll talk more about it like way down the road because so- Sony does like to do this. They like to lead off with games like that in their showcases, where like take Final Fantasy sixteen for example. We're going to show you this. We have no idea. We have no date to give you. Nothing. But it's that get hype moment. For those who know what it is, like Final Fantasy is obviously way different than this. Yes. But like mm-hmm. for those who know this, like this is like them kind of saying like, hey, we have we have a sequel to a really beloved game. But we're not going to tell you when it's coming because surprise, it's a launch title or it's a pack in with the next one or something like that. Like, yeah. I would not be shocked to see this be a pack in with PSVR yeah. 2. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, and, I, I, and, I like and, that I idea. That. And and she they did say it's still in development, so right. That's right. I definitely yeah, well, think well, that PSVR is still in development. <laughs> yeah, I just I just feel like this would have been like you know there's rumors about PSX coming back. This would have been the epic PSX game. People who love PlayStation would be so hyped about this game. Yeah, like, it, it was telling when Greg Miller was freaking out in all caps on my timeline, and I'm like. Right. What? Like, I've yeah. never even heard of this game before. Yeah. Like, and I, if, I feel like I'm pretty versed. And then I was like, oh, at the end, I was like, oh, it's right. a VR game. I will, right. It. I will say, at least it's a, it felt like a good opener to the show. Oh, I no, say. it is. It, it is. It, it set the expectation, I think, that this is going to be a smaller in scale show. Like, yeah. I scaled myself accordingly at that point. Right. Right. All right, well, uh, well, guys, we're gonna move. On. We're gonna move on. The next game that was highlighted in the um, in the list of games for tonight was Arcade Geddon, which is a shooter that's actually available in early access right now for both PS4 and PS5. Um, um I thought it was just PS5. Wait, is it PS5? It's only PS5. Oh, my notes say PS4. Also, whoops, my bad. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Keep me straight, guys. All right, but anyway, Arcade again. I'm gonna start. Off, I'm gonna start off on this one. Uh, first of all, brand new, brand new studio, brand new studio called Ilphonic, and this is a brand new IP. Uh, I'm getting freaking Fortnite slash Splatoon slash every other game of this Ilks vibe in there, and and. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just like, uh, it's another, it's another shooter. I'll just, I'll just wait for the next like Battlefield or Call of Duty or something like, you know. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm, I, the Mayhem shooters have never been my thing. I'm not, 
I'm not saying that as a way to say that this game is going to be bad. No, I'm just not a. I'm just not into the mayhem series like that. You know, like I, mm-hmm. I tried my hand with Fortnite. I tried, uh, like I've tried my hand of uh with with PUBG. I've tried my hand with a few yeah. of the other like Call Call Duty. Well, Call Duty Warzone is not a mayhem shooter. It's like it's more like a, just a, a campaign shooter. Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna play a mayhem shooter, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Overwatch or Overwatch Two when it comes out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's my thoughts on it. How about you guys? I am exactly the same way that I play a lot of FPS games though. And like a lot, I, a lot of like team based shooters and things like that. This, this isn't doing it for me. That being said, if a few of my friends pick it up and want to play it, it's 20 bucks to grab it on early access. I would probably grab it and play it because I, I would be happy to be proven wrong. I've said this about games in the past, yeah. but usually when it's like this kind of like, cartoony arcadey looking you know, like Fortnite doesn't do it for me knockout city didn't do it rocket arena didn't do it i don't think this is either i just have so many other options of games i'd rather go play that are team based i'd rather go play i'd rather go play destiny with my friends i'd rather play battlefield call of duty uh, halo like i'd rather go play all of these games and i'm glad that sony's making an investment into multiplayer games because they really need it um, you, you have all the amazing first party or uh, first player experiences tied down. You have these amazing story driven games, but I also want to play with my friends. Right. And this right. is a solid step. I think like at partnering with Ilphonic, okay, I get it. Like again, team behind Predator Hunting Grounds. So if you like that game, that may give you an indication if you enjoy their games or not. I didn't see anything that impressed this. This looked like a game that I'm glad they said it was early access because before they said that, I was like, this looks bad. <laughs> this looks flat out. No, no, like, this looks bad. This looks like it is way too early. I had the same thoughts looking at this as I did that game during Summer Game Fest, Anacrusis. Like, holy oh. hell, this game looks <laughs> bad. This game looks like it is half-baked. It should not be on this stream. And then they said, it's early access. It's coming out next year. Like, thank God. Because if this is early access, I can live with it. Yeah. I can live with that. I'm willing to give it a shot if it's early access. But if this is going to be a full-fledged, I'm just sitting there going, if this is a full-fledged $50, $60 game, hell no. Edward. Um, I think this game looks cool. I think what I took away from it is that Sony's invested in diversity because it feels like it feels like these are this game is from black hold, creators. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Did he say diversity? Because I remember six months ago he was so mad when uh when Japan Studios was was shutting his doors and the first thing he was saying, but where is the diversity? <laughs> oh, because you want to know. Still, I'm still know. mad about Japan Studios. I, like, Japan Studios is a different thing. Like I say, I feel like that. that was so <laughs> But for but for this game, like when I mentioned, like the hip hop soundtrack with like the kind of like these black characters and this this kind of design, it's kind of showing that there is some representation from uh, some black creators, you know, working with Sony to come out. It there's something about there's something about it that kind of stands out. That's just like that. Oh, this is cool. That's why I say it reminds me of Aerial Knights. Now it might be because of the soundtrack. Now the gameplay, yeah, the gameplay is kind of basic. There's nothing new or innovative. But um, to, I, I can't wait to see what people say about it. Uh, you know, hear their thoughts from the early access. Um, I I just seen it as that like this is kind of like some from some black creators and. Want to see what comes from it later on in the year, and I'm glad that they had it in the show for okay. uh, PlayStation Five. Cool, cool. Austin, take us out. So I, I, I thought the music was awesome. I was definitely digging the soundtrack. Boom. Yeah, um, yes. and I don't, I didn't think it looked as bad as Josh. Josh was saying, <laughs> I don't think it was that bad. I definitely was like, this is not a game that I want to pay fifty, sixty dollars for. This is definitely a game that. I would check out if it's free, if it's like, but even like, this is not a game for me. Like Knockout City, like I'm like, oh, I'd be interested in that, but I'm not paying for it. Like that's not my type of game to pay for. Oh God. Isn't this game? I'm I'm hearing the, I'm hearing what's his name from what's, what was that? What was that game that he was all pissed off that everybody was buying it? (laughs) No, not it takes two. No, the other guy. (laughs) Um, crap. Uh, What was the guy's name? Um, his, uh, uh, days gone, dude. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Austin, well, you giving you giving that guy ammunition right now, man. I mean, possibly, <laughs> but like this is this is a game like we don't deserve oh, to play these games. 
Right. Like we're killing is, studios. You, wait, wait, wait. Hold you on a second. Hold on a second. Get what uh, you're asking for when you make this kind of game now. Like these third right. person looters. Like you're asking for. It. You know what your audience is. These are people that are free to play, and unfortunately, like. There's just there's so Damn. much already in this group. This seems like a game that might be on PS Plus, and I swear if we get another game this like Destruction like All Stars, to PS Plus game. <laughs> like I feel like if we're getting if because like we're getting this, we're getting the uh, another game we'll talk about later that's going to be on PS Plus. If we get Arcade Get It on PS Plus, I'm like man, that's three year, that's three months of the year that we got a PS Plus game that's for PS5 that is a shooter or like multiplayer type game that i'm just not into like i'm just not and what was, uh, what was the third one was that uh destruction all-stars yeah like yes. well, so we had destruction all-stars yeah. and then the hunters game will be yeah. which we'll gotcha, talk about later gotcha. okay I was, I, was trying to think. I was like three i was like i know i so, destruction so All-Stars. so arcade bad. is that the other one destruction <laughs> all-stars looked bad and let me tell you it wasn't good either yeah it was, <laughs> was, it was not it was not way better it was way not better. Better. Oh, god thank battles. god thank god thank god austin we didn't throw that challenge down to uh to to the guys over over at diggity oh, yeah. yeah we were like <laughs> oh yeah let's let's be professional uh destruction all-stars players and we're gonna beat diggity and then i played it for like a few rounds whenever I could get a lobby going. And I was like, man, this, this is not good. This is not good. I will give this game a shot if it's free. Like I'm, I'm going to be straight up honest. It's not a type of game for me. I do like looter shooters, but I mm-hmm. definitely, I, li- I like more borderlands. I like outriders. This game definitely seems like a co-op type, you know, maybe not a full on story. I do like the look of it. It's different than it looks like Fortnite. But it's like also got its own flavor to it, which I can yeah. appreciate. Yeah. Whereas like Knockout City and Destruction All Stars, like it's like straight up Fortnite, like it, you know, it, white dude with yellow hair and just like <laughs> wearing some goofy vest. Like I don't want like, to see that. It feels like it has streaming potential. Like that's what it's going for. Um, oh yeah, oh does. yeah, games. Oh games like that are gonna are gonna live on Twitch and YouTube. I can tell you that yeah. right now. So I think so. I think people are gonna tune in to people's streams and see the chance. Check this game out. I think that's what I think that's what these kind of some of these games feel like. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So uh, next up on next up on the list was uh, Tribes of Midgard, and uh, it was and it was more of a featurette for this one. And the cool thing was they announced that there's at least three seasonal updates uh, projected for this particular game. Uh, but Josh said Josh said earlier, and I'm also in agreement. I'm kind of tired of this game. <laughs> uh, well, I, I know for me, I didn't know anything about it until Gearbox announced it. Mm-hmm. Um, last month, because I uh, there was just something that I haven't heard about it. Um, it looks, it looks like a basic medieval co-op action game. So there's it, nothing like it's, really it's, big it's, or anything. It's, it's basically Diablo. Like, and I, I might as well just play Diablo three. Like, I get, I got Battle.net. I can reinstall that. Or Diablo two. Or Diablo you know, two. Or or you know, wait for Diablo four to come out next year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think next year. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this I know is- wishful thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, this, I think this game just don't have no creativity to it. I think it's just a basic action role playing game. Yeah, so. this is the uh, this is Gearbox, another Gearbox published game, and it reminds me of Godfall, where it's like, oh, all right, God. we've seen this kind of game before. <laughs> And there's nothing special about it. That and may be meaner this... than me comparing a game to the Anacrusis. <laughs> Jesus. This, and here this we have trailer. another Gearbox published game because Randy Pitchford needs more fucking magic sets. <laughs> like, Randy Pitchford, just stick to Borderlands, please. Like, I, I just really like Borderlands and I don't... or. Or a uh, bullet storm. If you want to do another bullet storm, I'll take that. <laughs> bullet storm. They did. It's called Outriders. No, 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 no. That's not. <laughs> bullet storm is not even close to the same game. It's not even close. Bullet, to the same bu- game. But I- I'm joking because it was the exact okay. same developer, and the dialogue oh. reflects it. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so it's so cringe, <laughs> but I love it. I love it. I love that kind of dialogue. It's for video games. It's so. <laughs> but this this trailer was two and a half minutes. I, yep. I just two and a half minutes. Two, two and a half, half minutes. Yep. Game I've seen too much already. I have, like, I like, I like hey. top-down hey. games. I like Diablo. 
I played the uh, Vikings. Uh, oh, what is it? It was a Vikings game that I played. It's interesting. This is just like, man, this is just blech. I'm tired of seeing it. Stop so showing it. <laughs> I I would I would have said this. I think more people would have been excited if this game was like enough for Nintendo Switch than for PlayStation. I agree. I think yeah. it would be this feels like way the better perfect on Switch game too. I want to take on the go. If I were yeah. in games, like yes, this, like, yes, yeah. yes. This, agreed. This to me, screams. If you like Fire Emblem Three Houses, play the fuck out of this game. Yeah, yeah. I I can agree with you on that one. Or Advanced Wars or something like that. Like come come play this game. Like. And I've, I've seen that before where, like, games will be a timed exclusive on PlayStation or Xbox. And be like, this, and I get why you do that. Like, you, you need, you want the funding, you need the funding. But, man, in an ideal world, like, games like this I, just switch all day long. I, oh, that's I, what your sales are going to be. I think this is going to be on Nintendo Switch. I think this oh, is going to yeah, be in the first. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a timed exclusive because <laughs> Tribes of Midgard, the first one, mm. this is Trials. Tribes came to everything two years but, ago. Yeah, I think it's like the first Nintendo Direct of next year. I think it'll show up. I mean, yeah. Okay. Or it might this, just it's dump drop. Either that or it's going to be on my phone with Game Pass, right? Yeah. So <laughs> actually, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. It's gonna it's not gonna even be an event. It's gonna get shadow dropped and just say, hey, hopefully we have an inkling of hope of selling it on the Switch at this point. But I, I <laughs> and think, then, yes, it will be on Games Pass. <laughs> yeah, I think with all the, like with all the seasons and stuff. I think with everything coming out on PlayStation. Uh, what's the foot or everything come up, then they'll hit everything else. That, that's my idea. Uh, uh, yeah, um, not a great start for me, though. <laughs> no, no, this we 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 yeah. are a game I didn't know when, uh, then 0 for 2 after that. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. All right, so uh, so next up on our list is uh, is Fist, uh, which is an acronym for something. Yes. I for I did I for Forge and Shadow. Uh, I have it right here for you. Uh, it is um, uh, Forge and Shadow Torch. Forged in Shadow Torch. Yes. Yep. Uh, this has a furry bunny in it. I'm here for it. Yeah. yeah. Furries, I'm actually I'm down for Furries this Unite. This is yeah. <laughs> so I, this I, is the first game that was like actually cool to me. <laughs> that was like someone interested in. <laughs> uh, so this is a two D action platformer uh, that's coming out September seventh for PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five, um, where it, it kind of have an action style kind of beat 'em up little thing where you could do like air combos and stuff like that and use different weapons. Um, it looks really nice. I remember they showing this. Um, I think last year, for say, for I state of play, I think was it was it? like it was yeah, it was yeah, it was yeah. um, it was on they the um, it, it, was, it, was, it was on the June state of play. The, okay, for the for the PS5 event. Yeah, it looks really good. Background rising, like art rising, uh, looks really good. This looks up my alley or something. I would play. Um, definitely, I would get. It yep. looks cool. It, it's it a game that cool. I feel like I probably won't pay full price for, but I'll definitely check it out on sale. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I I agree, and it's got some it's got some cool elements to it too. It looks like it looks like it borrows from a lot of other other game genres, like because of course you got the platforming stuff. But there was a but there was a sequence in the trailer that man, I was like, man, what is this Gradius Five? Like it, <laughs> like what <laughs> is going on? Five. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah. Oh yes, when they're like underwater and he's got like a bunch of uh, like stuff is swirling around him, him and yeah. then bull- and it was yeah. like bullet hell. Yeah, well, Ron, your yeah. age is showing. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's a forty dollars game. I thought I would. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's. I, I definitely think it's a forty. Oh, I think game. it is I, too, and that, not, that's why I'm saying I, I, this. This needs to hit that fifteen twenty dollars sweet spot for me. Because like, there's no way in hell I'm mm-hmm. paying seventy dollars for this game. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, it looks, uh... it looks good. It looks like it has some good presentation value too. I, I will say that because mm-hmm. uh, there was the one, mm-hmm. there was the one scene which definitely was a cinematic where Hone Chick did like a freaking her on, yeah. on somebody in the prison. And I was like, what is going on right now? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll keep my eye on this. Like when they first unveiled it last last summer on the PlayStation Five event, I wasn't really feeling it. I know, I know you, I know you were, uh, you were digging it, uh, Ed. Uh, yeah. and, it com- and it comes out on September the seventh, so it's so it's right around the corner. Oh, and by the way, uh, the uh, Tribes game that comes out on the twenty seventh of July. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So the next game up on the list, unfortunately, if you guys are watching live right now, I do not have an actual trailer for it, but that was Hunters Arena's Legend. And uh, it's going to be a day one launch game on PlayStation Plus for uh, for PS5, for PS4 and PS5 owners. And it's also it is also going to be on PC. Uh, yeah, August, uh, August 3rd to September 6th, I believe. That's what uh, it is. The okay. date. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't remember. I didn't get the uh, the release date for it, but um, it looks it looks interesting. But at the same time, you know, like I, we're starting to learn that games that get day one releases on PS on PlayStation Plus are not always the most desirable <laughs> desirable game that you would have wanted to spend money out of your wallet for. <laughs> I what shocked me was that they were just like this action packed game, and I thought it was gonna be fast, and then it was just like a bunch of slow mo. I'm like, is the frames dropping? I'm like, what is this? Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was uh, YouTube at first when I was watching this, and uh, yeah, me yeah, watching same. it afterwards confirmed it was not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it has a real Dynasty Warriors feel to this it. I'm like, oh, looks bad. I, 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 I see. In motion, it looks bad. I, I'm not. Yeah, it's, there's something weird about it. B A B. That's my <laughs> thought. Awesome. I mean, but yeah, as for a free download, yeah, I'll I'll try it out. Oh, I'll, I'll try anything for free. Yeah, it it's gonna be on PS Plus. I'm gonna play it. I I think the characters look cool and interesting. Yeah, I like the design of the characters. I just don't know if I'm gonna like anything else about this game i feel like i feel like it has potential but at the same time like i'm also leery of the fact that it's a free game on launch yeah <laughs> yeah and also i'm not exactly sure what it is it seems so, to be some kind of battle royale it's a it's a it's a battle royale beat em up game but it's more like a it's more like a one it, it's it's supposed to be like a fighting game yeah mm. It's it's not bleeding edge kind of territory, but it's like mm-hmm. I guess you fight oh. AI, yes. you fight AI characters, and then you may meet up with a random, uh, uh, like real life player and fight them and stuff. Well, so you well, gotta thank know. Thank God it's not like bleeding edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of another Gearbox game that failed, <laughs> just <laughs> no, that one was that was good that was old Microsoft Game Studios. <laughs> Yeah, oh wait, ninja, was it? I thought. Yeah, I thought oh, yeah, that was Ninja Theory. That was Ninja Theory. Oh, thank God they made Hellblade. <laughs> uh, Phil Spencer, please stop letting people make all their passion projects. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, we're gonna move on because this is the game. This is one of the games I want to talk about. Uh, Secret I'm glad you do. <laughs> coming out on PS4 and PS5 sometime in early 2022. Yo. I am still hyped for this game. I was hyped for this game when they first unveiled it uh, a few months back and won the uh, won the previous state of plays. Mm-hmm. I'm more hyped for it now. I one of the things that I'm loving about this is like you seeing you seeing the guy get his ass beat, and then all of a sudden he's older. Yeah, and you gotta do the fight again. So I was mm-hmm. like, there's a part of me that like I want to play this game. And I want to get him to like 83 years old and have him be like the, <laughs> that that Tai Chi master. <laughs> yeah, that's just gliding around everybody, just just, just decimating like entire buildings of people. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this is one of the games that across the community, some of the people who've been watching it, they were just like, take your time with it. So I think this is going to be a good seller for PlayStation and the developers. Um, I'm I'm interested into it because I want to see. How this game goes. It looks cool. It looks so yeah. good. Plus the plus the fact that anyone can catch them hands, man. Men, women, it does not <laughs> matter. Anyone can catch them hands in that, in that game. Oh man, like uh, uh, uh and I love the art style. I love how uh, I love how it looks very fluid. Like, I mean, you know, like the slowdowns tend to only happen when like you've got the when you've got like the kill hit, you know, stuff like that, which is great, you know, like basically it's not gonna pull you out of the immersion of the game and stuff like that. I I want this game. I really do want this game. <laughs> uh, who else wants to talk? Um, it looks so... fine. It's not my cup of tea. I'll play it. <laughs> no, really. Like, I, I don't want to take time away from anybody yeah. who like wants to talk about this, and I don't want to dampen it. It's just like I'm not seeing what everybody else is. Well, but well, I'll I, play I it. might dampen it. I might dampen it even more. So I it's want to like this game. Oh God! I, I, oh God! We need Nelly back here. Oh my God! I, I want to like this game because I love the way it looks. I like the idea of it. I like the story. The character seems interesting. The problem is, is I played Absolver, 
the game that the studio made before Sifu, and I hated it. It was oh. so bad. For I some, had... a game that was so based on the combat, the combat just felt so wonky. It just didn't feel right at all. I'm hoping that since it's on PS5 and with the with the, with with the fact of the control, like the frame rate's got to be so high on this game. Like I want this to be, if it's the smooth combat that Absolver was kind of wanting to promise, mm-hmm. I might like this game more. But I have a bad taste in my mouth with Absolver. I did not like that game at all. I thought it was really underdone. It just when, didn't play right for me. Oh, so that's so my was, only big question on this game. So I gameplay had, and frame rate. I had mm-hmm. no, I had no idea. I'm so I didn't I didn't know like this is. I, I I'd never heard that game before until you just mentioned it. Yeah, I mean it it had somewhat of a following when it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it was on PS Now, and I think it got some love there. But I I tried it, and I just like man, this game is not for me. And when I saw this trailer came, when the first trailer came out for Seafood, I was like. This looks a lot like Absolver, but like they stepped it up a little bit. And when I saw that it was the same people, I was like, hmm, I really hope they stepped it up because I'm not going to buy this day one. This is definitely not a day one buy for me. I would definitely wait and see what people think and see what mm-hmm. other people say but, on this. Yeah, I think the early, early 2022, uh, I feel like this is a March game, I think. So I think this will yeah. give them enough time to... Make sure that the gameplay is tight, that the frame rate is tight, because I think now because they seeing all the great responses to it, um, they got to kind of deliver a really great product. Even if it's like worth the eight or eight point five, they really got to deliver a product that's going to be like, oh, I really enjoyed this game. I want to see if they made any other games besides Absolver, but I. Uh, uh... Oh, that was the other thing. Absolver had a weird, like, uh, multiplayer mode that was also really weird. Slow mm-hmm. clap. That's that's the name. I'm gonna look at it. I'm gonna see what what else they made. Uh, yeah, Absolver seems to be their their only game that they've made, actually. So, yeah. All right. So they're, I, still, I, they're still testing the waters, man. Yeah, I think it's on Switch, and I don't I don't think it's on Game Pass, but I know it's on Xbox. So if you want to give that a try to kind of see what the combat's going to feel, but mm-hmm. I it did not work well for me. And that's my only complaint about this game. Otherwise, it looks awesome. Mm-hmm. I would love to make my guy like 90 years old and start kicking ass. <laughs> you know? so, all right, so basically you just have trust issues right now. Yes. Okay, that's understandable. That's understandable because, like, you know, like people have been burnt by – I pitch for the gearbox, so like a lot of people aren't going to take some of his games seriously. Yeah, <laughs> that Borderlands. He can put Tiny T Wonderland. That's still my number one game. I'm so excited. What? You know, I I'm going to feel so bad for you guys if that game is garbage. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to I'm going to be mad. I'm, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to feel so bad. Everyone hates Randy Pitchford, but I like I don't hate him completely just because he. You know, like Borderlands is still like all right. Nah, watch he had What's no, he had one Borderlands job. Is bad. He had one job. He had he had the job of giving me a a very enjoyable follow up to Aliens, the the movie. Oh, you know the yeah, shady lift that I came with that. <laughs> Unless you're David Lasby, <laughs> you hate it. everyone hates that game. <laughs> you know I don't like I said I don't hate the game. Uh, even though I make fun of it, I just don't like what Randy Pitchford did and how oh, it was. We're, it was we're not awesome. we're not gonna take up a segment. Just you don't like that. that people found his porn on a bus or whatever they found it. They found it at <laughs> medieval <laughs> times. <laughs> Ten Where? minutes from my home at medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next title that was showcased there, which is a title we'd already seen before, but we actually got to see a little bit more uh, about the uh, the game. It's called Jet the Far Shore, J E T T the Far Shore. <laughs> Uh, I'd be out on PS5 and PS4. Um, you know what? I'm gonna let you guys speak speak first on this because, um, yeah, let me let me let you guys talk. <laughs> I I think it's a minimalist game, like it's just something that you play and relax with. You know, something to de stress with. That's what it looks like. Um, that's all I can say for it. It it doesn't offer anything other than that. It feels like the love child between 
like Star Fox's flying sections and No Man's Sky, but like stripped down to bare bones, and that's not a good thing. I won't even say Star Fox. I'll say Starlink. It feels like Starlink's yeah. flying combined with this and like stripped of anything that looks remotely entertaining. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think this looks entirely underwhelming. I don't know yeah. why like so many were like, oh my God, this is one, this is my highlight of the state of play. This looks so good. Like, I don't think we looked at the same game, guys. I'm... I really don't. I don't, I fail to see what any, like I can see where you would find the sh- uh, arcade again or whatever the fuck it was. I could see mm-hmm. why you would find that interesting. I do not know what you, it looks bland. It looks drab. And I feel like there's, tons of other games i can go play and get a way better experience that do the same thing yeah yep yep i agree Dude. yeah this game is just not special and i yeah. i was kind of waiting to see what other people thought about this because i'm not any game where it says like the first thing is explore i'm already checked out i don't like games like that i don't like games like no man's sky or nope. minecraft it's why i didn't like breath of the wild because everyone's first response oh. is like oh i love exploring breath of the wild i don't I don't care. I, I've seen the same tree <laughs> over and over again. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I just... And this we is still not like a game for me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we, we, all, we all have flaws. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But the any game where it's like, you can explore, I'm like, out. I'm done. I don't, I don't, I don't want to explore. I want you to give me a story. I want you to give me something... I need direction in my life. I don't. I explore the world, the real world. You know, I, I need direction in my life. <laughs> I don't need to aimlessly walk around. That's what I already do in real life. So, um, I just this is not for me. And then I was waiting to see what other people think. I saw some people excited about it online. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I guess. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen much uh, people talk about it, but yeah. like I said, it it looks like just something to de-stress, you know, something that's laid back. No, when I saw straight on the PS Plus, plus. and see the runs, you know, you, you mentioned that this game was show before. I don't remember this game, and yeah. when I saw the title, I was like, "Are we getting a Joan Jet game?" Because I would be all down for that. Give me a Joan Jet game. <laughs> Dude, can we get I, a Joan Jet game in the vein of Brutal Legend? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell just yeah. Give me, oh, just dude, give me I'll, I'll legend, line, I will line up outside. Or can we at least, like, get a Def Jam-style game with Joan Jett on the cover? Papa Phil Spencer, please, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Tim Schaefer, get Jack Black on board, get Joan Jett on board. Our Lord Thank Phil, who you. art in Seattle, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> Papa Phil, I'm... I will I will buy two Xbox Series S's if you give me Brutal Legend 2. That's right. He'll buy two of the cheap, uh, not as good bucks. I'm, I'm not I'm not rich. He's not I buying can't. your physical hey, copy. Hey, I could hey, buy hey, one Austin. Xbox Series X, but I'm just going to buy two Xbox Series S's instead. Hey, Austin, can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> you got an S on the other PC. <laughs> I, 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 I'm... Oh, you didn't hear you. You probably haven't. You probably pay attention to a couple of the episodes of Crossroads. Uh, I was like, I, I'm thinking about spending two hundred dollars on a freaking on a freaking Series S just so I can play Jet Set Radio Future. Ah, gotcha. Mm. Oh, <clears throat> by the way, my Xbox One turns out it was the power cord that shit out on me. Oh, good. So I got oh, good. a new one and it works now. So I'm glad that I have my Xbox until uh, I can get my hands on a Series S. And then I'm trading that shit in immediately before it breaks again. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on to the next title that was showcased at the State of Play because this is a this is a new this is a new reveal and a first look. Uh, this it was is all Josh. I don't know if he's excited about this. I, <laughs> I, I I hope he is because like man like like I was I was on um I was on the freaking Boss Rush uh, podcast with, with Josh when he just he just unleashed like the most massive boner about about the uh, the movie uh, that's connected to this uh, game. So yeah. Josh, we're gonna let you go first, and we're gonna talk about Demon Slayer: The Hinokami Chronicles for PS5. Dog shit! <laughs> so every anime game, you right? should be embarrassed that this got trotted out there, and that this is coming out in October. This looks bad. I, I so I've seen I'd seen gameplay of this before. Before uh-huh. we were led to believe this was just a fighting game. And they had only told us there were five characters in it. And I was like, how are you going to release a fighter with five 
characters. Like, this game's been up for pre-order for weeks now, and we finally saw open world gameplay, and it's not great. <laughs> it so, looks really, really boring. Um, this is the exact opposite of the flow of Demon Slayer, the show, and the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to make matters worse, this is only, the, the game only covers season one, and it might cover Mugen Train, the movie. But that's it, because season two isn't out yet. Like, so this only covers about a quarter of the overall storyline mm-hmm. in the manga. That, this is a new level of cash grab from these companies yeah. that make a- anime tie-ins are almost never good. Because this is Sega. Yeah. Because I was thinking that... Um, this, this, it's bad. This is bad. So I was thinking, because Sega did a game called Blood with Tail, which was based off of manga. Uh, where these demons steal this man's body parts, like for their body parts, and you have to go and try to rescue him back. It was on PS2. I thought they was going for that kind of game for this, so I thought it was going to be like almost an action adventure, like 3D beat em up or something. Because this is Sega, I, I thought there would be something like maybe from ne- Bandai Nelco, but I'm surprised that yeah. it's Sega. This kind of blows my mind that this is from the exact same team that did Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That is the one thing that's giving me a little bit of hope for it mm-hmm. is maybe it's just super underwhelming in the footage. I wasn't really wowed by Kakarot either, but when I watched uh, my friend Ray play through the game, I was like, okay, I actually really dig this, even though I'm not a Dragon Ball Z guy. I am hoping that, and I, I tweeted out about this, that regardless of how bad this is, I will play the ever-living fuck out of this. I, because I, I love me some Demon Slayer. I, I, I do <laughs> like the fact when it's in movement, not when it's in action, like when he's running around and everything, it looks really good when he's doing that. Um, it just, it looks really boring. This isn't, this isn't a manga where or an anime where they're just fighting like legions of guys like in Dragon mm-hmm. Ball Z or something, or in Naruto, and that, like, I think that really, like, there's only a handful of, like, actual fights in this series. And the ones that are there are really good. But they chose a really strange level to showcase. Um, The mansion is, but, I mean, out of season one, there's really only, like, one fight. And then there's two that are on the, two that are in the movie that I'm like, yeah, I would want these in a game. It just feels really strange that you're going to really build a game around the three or four ending fights of the season mm-hmm. slash movie. And you got to play through two thirds of the season to get there first, which is not going to be enjoyable or entertaining. It's going to go real slow, just like in the, in the show. And people are going to quit and be like, I spent $60 on this. Yeah. I don't think, th- I don't think this is going to sell well. It looks oh, good. No, no, no. Oh, it's it going will. to sell. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's going this to sell. This is going to sell. It's going this to sell. This is going to sell an obscene amount of copies. Come on. Come on. I, I, come, I, on I, come on. I, I, anime, I, come on. Anime uh, tie-ins, Ed. Come on. And, anime tie-ins. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, Demon Slayer is the most popular anime and manga in the oh, world right I now. Believe, I, I, believe, I believe you, but I just feel like for, like, I don't this know. This game it's just, is going to sell bonkers overseas especially. If you, if yeah. they, if they build it, the weebs will come. It's, so it's just like, I mean, like all the Naruto I'm, games that we've seen, all the anime times we've ever seen, all at least break even, no matter how bad they are. Yeah. Demon Slayer is the hottest anime property in the world. It sold 200 million volumes in the last 12 months alone. It's gonna do it. Like we had an anime movie break uh, almost 100 million in the U.S. alone. That's mm-hmm. record breaking. Like this game will sell no matter how bad it is. Mm-hmm. Now the online discourse is going to be a completely different thing, and I'm just so looking forward to sitting on the <laughs> subreddit and seeing the well, absolute meltdown when this comes out. Well, and yeah. that's why I, I think that's probably why, like, when I say that it's not going to sell because I don't, I really, we really don't hear that many about anime games selling well. Um, like even right. yokai watch, like even yokai watched when that was pretty popular this I heard... isn't a complete i will say right now in terms of popularity in the west demon slayer is in a league of its own when you compare it to things like yokai watch mm-hmm. like yeah. I mean, the yeah. only thing that i think would equal this is i mean dragon ball z kakarot which sold phenomenally last year it was one, like one of the 20 best-selling games of the entire year yeah mm-hmm. And I mean, the only other property I think that could really pull this off in the U.S. would be if they made a My Hero Academia game in this style, which I really, really secretly want. But 
Not what, if it's going to look like this. I was going to say, this, this is the thing with anime games. No one who doesn't like anime is going to buy them, and the people who like right. the anime it will Are buy going it. to buy it, I, yes. I'm like, going to start a summoning circle for day one Xbox Game Pass for this I game. Had, I yeah. had um yeah I had a modded PS2 uh back back in the day, and uh, when my friends found out I had a modded PS2, they actually went online and ordered like three different Naruto games just so they could play on my system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's insane. Like I I'm not a voucher for the My Hero Academia fighting games. They're bad. They're I real buy bad. Them. I still buy them because yeah. me and my friend Nick, who loves the show, will play against and fight each other, beat the shit out of each other, and talk about how much we love the show while we're playing a game that we hate. And same thing with Ruby. Like, Ruby's game is terrible, but I've played through that story probably 15 times because me and my friends just, we play it and talk about the I show. I friends who do it's, that with the One Piece games, yeah. Yeah. It's, it'll sell. And Demon Slayer is huge. I haven't watched it, it, it yet. It, it, yeah, so, Demon, Slayer, this, Demon Slayer is huge. Well, Aniplex, we'll see. which is the company that makes the anime, is doing, I believe, the cutscenes in this. So I personally, I think it'll be worth playing just to see the cutscenes. The cut they're as, remotely as gorgeous as Mugen Train is, which is just simply one of the best animated movies I've ever seen. Uh, and that, that's the aforementioned movie that Laurent heard me just gasming about. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I really, really think, like, quality-wise, this is not going to surprise us. I mean, it could. But I have I do not think this is gonna be good at all. I think this is a quick cash grab. I think they know it too. And they weren't planning on it until they saw how big you can train was in Japan. Mm -hmm. But when you have a movie uh, you have a game based off of like the best selling animated movie of all time in Japan, even beating out Hayao Miyazaki's movies, like this this is gonna do numbers over there. And that's cool. It's a quick cash grab. If this gets me a Budokai or a Kakarot level game in the future or Dragon Ball Fighters even you get me something like that in the future with this franchise and I will be all there for it. I will support it to my dying breath this ain't it though <laughs> this does very clearly feel like it's the first game with the license which it is it's the first time any of these characters have appeared in a game so that alone I think is going to get people excited this is it's massively popular not just amongst you know people our age but Teenagers are super into this. Teenagers are yeah. stupid when they buy games. I don't know if y'all know this, but they buy I, games that look I real bad because it's based I on something they think is cool. Yep. I, I bought a lot stop, of movie tie-ins in the early 360 years. A lot. I would have yeah. bought this. 30-year-old <laughs> me is going to buy this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well... Uh, that is that is another episode of the Gospel According to Josh Finney. So, uh, so they have it, guys. <laughs> right. Bring it on. That's it. That's right. Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. Um, I forgot to check the date on that. When was that supposed to coming out? Like October eighteenth, I think. Oh, okay. I think. All right. All right. So, our the next title that was featured on the State of Play uh, this uh, this evening was uh, Lost Judgment, the second game by Sega, and the second game on this on on this list that I was like, oh, I'm getting this day one. This game looks right up my alley, and I love the presentation for it, man. For a second there, for, for a, a split second there, I thought we were looking at actual movie footage because, like, the detail, the level of detail mm -hmm. on the character mm -hmm. models was freaking phenomenal. I was like, yeah, this is definitely a PS5 game. <laughs> this yeah, is it, it looked, it look, uh, the first game, Judgment, looked really good, too. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. So uh, seeing this, I, I'm I'm very intrigued. I want to. I have judgment. I just need to play through it. Uh, so I'm interested in this one. I'm gonna see where they go with this. And it looks like there's gonna be better combat and then actual mini gangs for it. So yeah, it's up my alley. Yeah, I did. I did. I because I did not know this is a sequel to something. I I I literally thought that this was a um a, a tie-in to Yakuza. I mean. I, I guess it's in the same universe, but not quite. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but all I know is we've got the elements in this, in this that I will I will play. Like I saw that. Don't think I didn't see the rhythm dancing part in that trailer. <laughs> don't think I didn't see that. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna tear up my DS. Well, awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna tear if, up my uh, deal shot controller doing this. If you got a PS now, or on, I know mm -hmm. how much we all love PS now and how great it is. Uh, you can play Judgment the first one on there oh that's right yeah 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 so for anyone that's interested i i don't I think have this game, ps now 
looks awesome, but I have not played Judgment, and I've never really played all the way through a Yakuza game, so I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I don't know, but I don't know anything about it. But this this looks cool to me. Like this looks like I I like the the very beginning, like when they're in the courtroom and stuff like that. Yeah, that seemed mm-hmm. it seemed like there was a serious tone to it. Yeah, it looks cool, yeah. cool as hell. Just, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ed, Josh, what you guys had, what you guys had to say on this one? Um, I, like I said, I was going to get it. Uh, I know the first one has some problems with one of the actors. So uh, I think they made sure definitely for the voice actors, the Japanese voice actors, not the American ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think with the Japanese voice actors, I think they made sure that um, they got it right this time. He, um, they, he was like in the real Yakuza, wasn't he? Wasn't that what it happened? He, I think so. And I think he was like cocaine a sex offender usage. or something like that. Oh, cocaine usage? Or uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I, I have Wikipedia okay. pulled up in front of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I needed uh, to figure out what this game was. I've never played a Yakuza game. Yeah, um, it, it did well. I think it came to Xbox. It did, yeah. yeah. Is it on Game Pass, I think? It is not on Game Pass. I think it was at one point. It's the one Yakuza game that's missing. That's missing, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, I say if anyone's interested, looking for it, like the first one, um, try to get it on sale for like $20 or something for a PS4 and give it a go if it's your, if it's your jam, if you're very interested. But this one looks really good. I like that the story that they're going for with this. Um, this and it looks, looks cool. Like, I'll probably play it. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. really interested. It really has a nice kind of like mystery to it, like of like a movie mm-hmm. mystery to it. Yeah, reading it, I mean, it sounds like a kind of game that I I really like games like that. So this sounds like something like again, it's one of those I don't know if I would want to drop sixty dollars on it, but this is definitely something like if it you know if it's on one of the summer or winter sales, like I would definitely grab this and give the first one at least a try since they just mm-hmm. did the remaster. Um, I, I would give that a shot, but yeah, cool. Two thumbs up. And Matt Mercer's on the uh, English voice cast, so I like that. All right, cool. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna roll right into the next one, which I, I'm kind of surprised they actually showed up during the state of play, but I'm not that surprised, uh, honestly. Uh, What's uh, Death Stranding uh, director's cut? Uh, uh, we actually, well, I think mostly this was just all cinematic. It was a cinematic trailer yeah. for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, this was the best trailer for the game, though. That like, yes, that is true. It really that is, is true. That's like if we if we had seen if we had seen if we had seen that trailer when the game was preparing to to launch on PS4, I think mm-hmm. it would have went. I think it would have went a different direction. I, I think think it's gonna sell better now because people were like, "Oh, this game looks better." <laughs> like it looks fun. Like every everything else was mm-hmm. just like really weird and like him walking around and then everybody's. It's like, oh, it's, you know, UPS simulator or whatever. But yeah. then you start seeing some of the combat. I think it was like, oh, this looks way more interesting. Than yeah, like and the, I think, yeah, yeah. I, I think the breakdowns of all the dishes that they make that's gameplay wise uh, really like highlighted what the game is about that people was going to look interested in. Because like you can do car races. I guess now you not only do you got a melee, it looks like now you got an actual weapon. So you don't have to try to like use the bathrooms to make your weapons and stuff and new enemies. Like it looks really, really good. Uh, I for some reason it doesn't feel like a director's cut in a sense because I'm just like, was this all all the stuff that was added onto it? Was this stuff cut out from the original game? It sounded to me like maybe, and this is what I thought when it came out. It's like, is this game really already coming out? Like, I feel like this game was not supposed to come out when it did. I, like, I think it came out because we we know just from, like, the last year of development on Death Stranding, I mean, the fact that we didn't even see what the game even looked like until about six months out wasn't a great sign. We just kept getting cinematic trailers and, like, yeah. look look at me hanging out and smoking cigarettes with my buddies Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen. We're so fucking cool. Oh, Jeff Keighley came by, too. Like, <laughs> show us the... Show us the game, you twat waffle. Like, I don't, I don't know what else we have to say. Like, and I feel like Sony is probably sitting there going, "Okay, we helped set you up. We gave you the Decima engine, dude. It's been like four, four and a half years. Can you please give us a motherfucking game?" And so, what you got is what you got. Um, yeah. A little surprised we're getting this two years after it released, uh, but. Yeah. 
This is, I mean, it's, and my other thought when I saw this was who is telling Kojima that he can't put all whatever he wants into a game at launch. I don't think Sony's having that conversation with them. Right. I mm. definitely feel like. Especially when Sean Layden was in charge of Sony at the time. It yeah. may, I, I have a feeling it probably had to deal with the PC version too. Um, for some reason, I think some, I feel like if the PC port, uh, version played a part into it. Cause I, I think the question now is going to be, is, is PC players also going to get the definitive edition? I don't mean the director's cut um, it becomes, on day it, one. If it comes to PC, I, yes. I really think there there's only two ways that this went down. And that's either A, PlayStation was like, hey, we want to put your game out now. We need to do it now. And I don't think they would have rushed Hideo. I really think the second think so option that about the game Yeah, I don't is, think so either. Hideo Kojima was just like, that's the game. And they're like, really? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, that's the game. And, and then well, he's like, no, I'm not done with it yet. Wait, we already released it six months ago. He's like, yeah, I got some more stuff I want to add now. Like, I really feel like he's like, he's like, it's almost like he wanted you to see it from this perspective. And mm-hmm. now he wants to see you see well, it from this perspective. And he's, it's it's like what you and Laurent were saying at the top of the show, like, if you think that you're getting the complete version of a Hideo Kojima game right at launch, you're a fool. Yeah. With mm-hmm. the exception of Metal Gear Solid 4. That is the one I think we never got a director's cut of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love... And, well, what, uh, well, like, when you look at this, like, I'm not... I'm not as bothered by this as like the Ghost of Tsushima one, for example. This is $10. No, no. You're getting more missions. You're getting more things to do. I don't like the practice of bundling the FPS and resolution increases, though, with the, and that's the only way you can get those is by paying the $10. Mm-hmm. That actually does not sit well with me. I think $10 is a totally fair upgrade price for this game. Totally I, fair if you are young. I wonder if this was like if he has another team with them in Kojima production. Like the second team worked on this director's cut to add that stuff while his A team are is planning for his new game. I, I just wonder. I mean, I've, I've so I've, I've got I've got my own personal feelings on this. We've seen a lot of reporting. All all things indicate that he moved off of Death Stranding a long time ago, and this was likely a skeleton crew still working on it. Yeah, with him assisting in it directly, but we know he is working on a cloud-based game and was working on it for Stadia before they shut it down. Yeah. Um. So I I do think you're right on the money with that. Like this is probably like I don't know, ten to fifteen staffers working on this. Probably why it took two years to come out. Japan mm-hmm. was hit by lockdowns a lot harder. They don't have dev kits to take home. This and that. I get it. I understand it. Um. I just I ten dollars. Okay, fine. Whatever. Just stop bundling resolution and frame rate increases. Quality of life changes should never be behind a paywall. Ever. I don't care who you are. It should never be locked behind there. I, you know what? I, 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 I 100% agree with you about that. Quality of life changes should not be behind a yeah. paywall. Um, but yeah. The, the the sad but the sad truth for the matter is like this is a different era that we are in with console yeah. game, games and stuff like that. You know, like Quality of life changes for a guy like me for, for the PC is like a six hundred dollar like upgrade, right. <laughs> like it's a new graphics card for me. So so you know, and we we are currently in the middle of the biggest generational leap we have seen from console for to console. console gaming. Yes, yes, probably for real. since I w- I mean I would say Super Nintendo to N sixty four. Like this may be the biggest or sorry, Super Nintendo to PlayStation one. We are probably seeing the biggest jump. Like. Yeah. In terms of that, because there is a stark mm-hmm. difference between how some of these games look on PlayStation 4, a, a base PS4 versus a PlayStation 5. There for is real. a yeah. noticeable difference. Like some of those consoles sound like they are ready for liftoff. The FAA is calling me saying it's illegal to fly that low. But <laughs> they run like a like a gem on my PS5 or my Series X. Yeah. And that's why like I look at this and I, I said it before the show began, like I really love the frame rate increases and uh, the FPS boost that we're seeing from so many of these companies saying, like, Metro Exodus is one that I think of. And like, hey, if you already own the game, we're not going to charge you. It's going to be a free upgrade to Uh it. But going forward, this is going to be our standard version of the game. And it's an excuse for them to get a couple more bucks. But hey, if you already own it, we're not going to nickel and dime you. Yeah. And that is the logical thing to do here. Not everybody needs to take the Call of Duty approach that we saw last year or the 2K21 you know, you don't need to, we don't need to be charging people 
70 or 80 bucks just to get quality of life improvements. And I, I'm a little worried about this trend. I know y'all talked about this on Crossroads between this, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know exactly with Remake. Did Remake give you the quality of life changes or did you still have to pay for those? Uh, it, it was give it was given. I have, cause okay, I have, awesome. cause awesome. I have I'm, I'm going to leave that out of it then. I'm yeah, going to leave that I, out of it. Yeah, I have the PS4 version of Final Fantasy VII Remake, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was a it was a free update to get integrated. So I have all the PS5 stuff. Awesome. The only thing I had to pay for was the Yuffie DLC, but everybody has to pay for that if that's they have that, that's, if that's they fine. have if they have the PS5 edition. And yeah. that that's where, where I come at with this and with Sushima. the the price the price the ten dollar price tag does not bother me. I think that's perfectly fair for what they're adding. I ten dollars perfect price point. Sushima, it's like it shouldn't be thirty. It should be like it should be fifteen, frankly. But and when you start locking things like resolution and frame rates behind that or behind exclusivity agreements, I mean, on the other side of the coin, we saw like Yakuza. The only way you were getting a next gen version of Like a Dragon was if you bought it on Series X for the first few months. Mm -hmm. Like that kind of stuff, like doing things like locking upgrades to platforms, doing. Um, frame rate boosts and resolution boosts behind a paywall that is anti-consumerist bullshit there is no reason a game that has more than made you the money back they have admitted that it is more than broken even for them and it has been very successful especially on pc like it was successful for it even with the pc there's no reason you need to charge us to make the game look and run the way that kojima wanted it to run initially there's no reason for that. And that's the only issue I take with this. Other than that, they got me interested for the first time ever in Death Stranding. Yes. Yeah. I have the rich I have the Death Stranding because they had it on sale. Uh so I can't wait to play it. Um this director's cut one. Um, I wanna look for reviews. I'm gonna see what people say. Uh because I'm like, if I get a PS5, I'll do the ten dollar upgrade. Um, but I wanted, I do want to play the bitch no version. Um, but what they added on is very impressive. I really like where they're going. Yeah. With it. I, I I always like it whenever you get more story to a game, you get things that flesh out, you get some DLCs. Mm -hmm. I like things like that, especially you know, I mean, in a game like a Kojima game, like there is always more to explore than what he gives you right there. And I think some of the beauty of the subtext of his stories. But do we know how much this is going to cost if you don't already own the game? That's my lingering question here because I'm reading on PlayStation Blog and I don't see it. I just so see the ten dollar upgrade. It's, so it's fifty nine ninety nine. Mm. So it's sixty dollars. It's sixty dollars for the director's cut for PlayStation Five. Don't like that. Uh, wait, and then, wait, so wait, and, this two year old game. Okay. Don't like that. Right, and so and if you own the if you well, own. The original version, if you yeah. paid the sixty dollars, the ten dollars you'd be paying seventy in in total. If you did it, I, I get I get why you dislike that, Josh. But we're still yeah. on year, we're still on year one of the PS Five, so like they I so like it. so like they got to they got to get that return on yeah. investment. Yeah, plus you know it's it's gonna go on sale within the first four months or so. It like, will, like, it, it, yeah, later. like we'll, yeah, like we have we have me, holiday the, coming the up problem, real soon. For for me, it, it's the sticker shock, and it's very much we would not be being so casual about this imagine last year if forza horizon 4 when they came out the series x version we had been charged for it to be 4k 120 frames and the dlcs and all that like imagine if that was re-released as a separate skew like that's basically what i'm looking at here yeah that's mm -hmm. how i'm viewing it and i'm like we would not be as casual and cool about this like I think we're okay with it because this is still a new concept, but two games in two weeks using this kind of pricing model is a little concerning to me. I can't help but think that there are, that the last of us part two is probably the next game to do this. Oh, a hundred percent. And you already yeah. had Spider-Man remastered happen last year. So there's, it's not a, to me, it's not an overly great trend, but I'm going to, resist like just holding feet to the fire quite yet in hopes that they pivot a little bit like director's cut also implies that you had to cut all this content from the main game like that's not the case with Tsushima and it's kind of looking like it's not the case here like director's cut in a movie that's 30 minutes you had to cut out of your movie for example for Quentin Tarantino you had to cut it so it was appropriate for theaters and it was appropriate length 
That's not the case here. This was stuff you built after the game. Stop calling it a director's yeah. cut. Call it like the complete edition or like game yeah, of the year real, or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they're really just trying to do something different on that I know, one. And I, 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 yeah. it just I'm sad, not but I get you saying, here, right? I'm, it sounds I'm, like pretentious. It sounds I'm like telling people title. to get off my <laughs> lawn it's, right it's now. Kind okay? of, I mean, I think it's just their like line name for definitive edition. Get off get off my FedEx route. That's what I'm telling them right now in, in, in death stranding terms. Mm-hmm. We only use USPS in this house. All right. Well, uh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> if you're using <laughs> USPS. It's, it's <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, well, well. There's that. We've got. We're on to the the finale for uh, for the PlayStation State of Play, uh, and we're talking about Deathloop. As a matter of fact, if you're watching right now, you can see some of the uh, some of the nine minute uh, demo reel playing right now. Guys, let's go ahead and unpack this one, and then let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um. I know why they did this nine minute thing to really get like entice not entice players to really show that what what this game is really about why all the delays accumulate to this mm. and why we're making it a big game. I don't think it's more on Sony. I think this is more on Bethesda and Arcane because of them doing the de- uh, delays and trying to get people to realize this is what this new IP is truly about. You know, this is the full vision that we have for this game because I think Mar- I think Sony probably next month is going to go hard on this marketing till this game comes out. So you're going to see a lot of commercials, a lot of stuff on Twitter, uh, probably a lot of blogs and stuff and breakdowns. I think they're going to go full on with the promotion for this game uh, next month. Um, and it it looks good. I mean, it looks like... Uh, I know some people say Deathloop is not for me and everything, um, but I think it looks it looks, it looks looks fun and creative um, uh, with this devs and, and everything. Um, kind of give you an idea of what the game is going to be about. Um, it's n- I'm not going to buy it uh, probably be- because there's a lot of stuff coming in for Nintendo and Xbox in September that I'm going to be going for. So, but I think it's I think it's cool um, for PlayStation Five owners, and then later on, if it comes to, when it comes to Xbox or even PC, I think people will want to play it there and pick it up. All right, Austin, what what do you what do you have to say about this? So I intentionally didn't watch this because I knew it was going to be a big gameplay piece. And you know me, I like to stay in the dark on all ah. these games. I try to try to stay in the dark as much as I can. I I mean, I, like I said at the beginning of the show, I am not a Dishonored fan. So arcane games have really never spoke to me. This one, it has me a little more interested, not only because it's a PlayStation, you know, time exclusive, but it's mostly because this game seems to be like actually murdering people <laughs> and it might sound bad, but I hate it in Dishonored where it's like, oh yeah, you get the good ending if you don't kill as many people. I was like, well, okay, that's that sucks. I, I hate sneaking around. That's the part of the game I don't like. So uh, <laughs> this this one seems to be about making your, your, your kills, uh, making them cool, making them as tactical as possible. That gets me somewhat interested in. I think the story is really interesting. I still don't know anything about it, and that's why I've kind of stayed out of the dark. I don't want to know more about it. And, I want to just be surprised. So I, I would say, Austin, uh, don't mm-hmm. watch the trailer because they actually tell you what the premise is on why you're doing all the killing stuff. So if you really want to go mm-hmm. in like unknown about yeah, the game, yeah. I, I literally say don't watch the trailer or anything. Yeah, and, that, and that's why I did it. I just... The only the only thing I really know is that there's two people and they might be trying to kill each other. Like and and I've seen some of the gameplay bits. And that's all I really want to keep it at. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They and they have definitely gone hard on this marketing. They have marketed the shit out of this game so much. For it real. has been for on real. the top of the PS5 sales charts for so long. Like it's been on pre-order for fifty three ninety nine. Like it's there every day. You look at the mm-hmm. store, it's there. They are selling this game hard. I think it's going to be good. Um, just I like. I think it's going to speak to people that are into those games. I mean, people love Dishonored. It's definitely like a cult classic. I feel mm-hmm. like they know that Dishonored is um, is one of those games that it's you know it, it doesn't sell that well. And I think that's why maybe they're trying to market it a lot just so that it will sell um, more. Um, 
So, but I, yeah, I, I intentionally didn't watch it, but I, I am interested in it. Just don't know if I'm day one interested in it yet. Just not sure. I right. said definitely, definitely brief reviews there. Mm-hmm. All right, Josh, uh, what say you? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make it real quick. Um, I haven't really been interested in this game. Um, I wasn't overly impressed when it debuted last year at the PS5 event. Didn't really care about it in September. Didn't really care about it in March. The Game Informer cover story was cool. Didn't really care about the impressions that other people did, though. Like, it felt like a bunch of people, like, desperately trying to convince me that this was a really cool game because it was one of the very few games they actually got to preview in the last year. And, like, a whole bunch of, like, a whole bunch of, like, streamers and content creators got to try it. And it was like, okay, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of false hype for this game. Seeing it play out today gave me that first bit of hype because we finally saw a lot of the powers at play. And it felt like Dishonored. The best compliment I can give it is Dishonored with guns. And it feels like it almost encourages you to use, like, mayhem roots as opposed to Dishonored, which really encouraged stealth and things like that. This doesn't feel like you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, I like that. I'm really, I'm really, like, I'm actually, like, nervous thinking about the PvP aspect of this. That, like, you have to choose to toggle it off, I believe. It is on by default that somebody else can be in your game as the other assassin. I hate yeah. that. I Fuck hate that. that because you know people are going to fucking grief in it. Yeah. You know you're going to have to do a full playthrough with that for the platinum. Like, that's just something they're going to do. And I'm just, like, I'm already over it just thinking about it. But I'm also not excited thinking about the computer hunting me like that. Like, that is, that is not fun. <laughs> but this looks like Dishonored meets Hitman, and I'm really here for that. This is the first time I feel like I've seen extensive, they, just, they showed a whole level. And it made mm-hmm. me really interested in this game for the first time. But like Austin said, I don't know if it's day one or $60 interested. I will absolutely play this when it comes to Game Pass next year. Um, this this feels like a, almost a wait and see for me. because, And not the least of which because um, I have a, a bet on this doing really bad in my video game fantasy league. Um, that it's not going to review well. I, I simply don't know if it'll review well. but Oh, so the, you don't... Not sell well, but review well. Review well. You don't think it's um, Yeah, no. I, I think this game is going to sell. I think it's going to be Arcane's best-selling game. I, I don't think that's hard. It is, a, it is a console exclusive in the first year of a new console, and in a fall when there's not – there's a, a very good chance that there's not going to be a Sony-exclusive game for the rest of the year. They're really counting on Deathloop and Kenna, like we talked about, to carry a lot of that water. Yeah, and like I, of course, you know, there there existing games that have come out this year that have been so good. These mm. appeal to two radically different types of gameplay players, I think, than the other games that have come out. And I think I, that's that's the genius. You know, you've talked about how it's at the top of the charts, and they were pushing this hard even before the Bethesda sale was announced, right? Mm. Because right. you got two games, you got this and Ghostwire Tokyo from Bethesda as year long timed exclusives. I'd promo that too. I really, I, you had to pay an obscene amount of money to make those exclusive. You yeah, right. gotta show that at every single event. But I also, I think this brings up not related to the game, but I think this brings up an interesting industry discussion of how much, based on how much you pay for a game to remain exclusive for, to you and for how long and how big it is, what studio it's from, does that play into how many events you have to show it at? Because remember how many fucking state of plays and E3s we had to sit through seeing Odd World Soulstorm? I think it... it Deathloop is getting to that point. I think it actually depends on paying for the development versus paying for the marketing. Oh, they're not paying for the development on this game. Though. And 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 so I 100% think one hundred percent they did not pay. For and, this game. and that's and that's kind of the thing about it. I think if they would have paid for the development, I think they would have went harder with the marketing. Oh, they because because that they, they absolutely would have because that developing goes into the marketing. Um, right, so also, we. And we, like we know that from you know from Game Pass leak financials and stuff like we know that Microsoft mm-hmm. does that when they help do it like that's why Stalker had such a huge presence at that E3 show because they've been bankrolling that they've been bankrolling that they've been bankrolling the gunk like they're gonna push these games mm-hmm. and so thank God Deathloop is almost out now I can have the exact same feelings about Ghostwire Tokyo for the next eighteen months and just be ready to play it that's the one I'm excited for right now personally of the two. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be great. I've never played an arcane game at launch. I played them all in Game Pass. Love the studio. They've never made a bad game. 
So well, one more can you say this is quick. their vision for a futuristic Dishonored. This is Dishonored 3, whether you want right. to admit it or not. They said if they did another one, they wanted to take it into the modern age or into the near future. So that you have the literal exact same teleporting power as Corvo. I don't know how you can be any more on the nose than that. Like some of the environments look reused from Dishonored 2, and I'm not right. joking. Like, right. I literally I, looked at I looked yeah. at a gameplay section. I'm not trying to, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, Austin, but I looked at one and I immediately thought of a level in Dishonored 2, and I was like, oh shit, this is like almost the exact same layout in this particular area. That's not a great yeah. look. I think it's the yeah. art style. Uh, no, I, Ed, I swear to God, oh, the no, building, no, the windows I, that opened everything, oh, I swear to God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. I just think that like, you probably, you wouldn't notice it if you looked at that art style. Like, if you start seeing comparison yeah. videos, then you'll see it. But because of that art style, people might be like, people might not pay attention to it. Yeah, I mean, it, it the, the, the street, the building layout, like, the floors, the window placement, like, I was like, I know exactly what this was in Dishonored 2, I know exactly what I did in this, in this room, I know what I did. That is not the feeling I want when looking at your first game in four years. Right. So, I'm gonna now, get off my soapbox, I still want to play this, I love Arcane. I like Bethesda, Xbox had the best game of the show. <laughs> That's really Josh. sad. An Xbox published game is gonna have the best game in a Sony show. <laughs> now, Josh, real quick question. If I set the bar, Metacritic 80, higher or lower on Deathloop? Lower. You, th you think okay. so? You think low? You I'm, think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I think lower, but not by much. I'm gonna say it's gonna be between 75 and 80. I just think this game I, and. I, I would say the other assassin is going to put off a lot of people. I, I say it would get a 86, and then after the two days happen, they're going to people are going to go in and try to tank it. So wait, why would he? Well, hold on, this game does not look like this game does not look like something. This game does not look like this game does not. Oh, go, ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just saying for journalists from from journal from journalists, it's probably going to be an 86. Uh, on Metacritic, but I know that I have a feeling that people like gamers are going to wait the two days so they could go on and like really uh, crap this game. Um, I like, look, really I've been watching, I've been watching this nine minute playthrough, and I've I've watched all the trailers and stuff. Like it's on, it's on one of my, it's on one of my lists for games I will purchase for PS Five. I don't see this game getting the ire that's going to get review bombed like that. I I, I don't I, I don't I. I, think, I if they're still holding grudges against Bethesda being sold to Microsoft and exclusive stuff, I think that would be. Hey, hey, you stylish. know what? Hold on. First of all, first of all, like they shouldn't they shouldn't review bomb this game because they want to be. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They want to be. Pissed oh no, off. no, no! I'm they, agreeing with you. Well, well, I'm about to say this. If they want to be pissed off at the fact that you know, if they want to be pissed off at the fact that Bethesda, you know, Bethesda, everything is basically Xbox. This game wouldn't have came out on on any fucking PlayStation console. Oh, I I agree. I think so, they're just trying to. So I think so, to so I think it. so I think some people need to use it's, some some freaking common sense and some logic here and realize, hey, we are lucky that we got the the smattering of games that we got following this ZeniMax Bethesda deal because we could we could have got jack shit and and. <laughs> I think people going to just. I think it's just a spiteful thing. I don't think it's because they care about the game or not. I think it's because. Uh, this is this is this is just like those same assholes who are trying to who are trying to kill Kojima's new project before they <laughs> yeah. even before they even oh. know if it is but, an actual micro Microsoft game. This, but I but this is, like, this is just one of those. This oh, is just one of those it. internet things, though. Like it is every it is. game. Yeah. What it, game it, isn't getting review bombed because right? someone's mad about something? But like I like, said, like, from the from the journalist perspective, I think at eighty percent, eighty six percent on Metacritic. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm see this. Saying. I see this game. I see this Tunic game. Is probably the most wholesome game I've seen in a long time, and someone will find some way to review bomb that game. <laughs> <laughs> I I personally see this game um, ranging anywhere between a seventy seven to an eighty two. Yeah, uh, that, that's agree. roughly the range that I have it. I think if it is below 80, it's going to be like a 78 or 79, which still is not bad. Yeah, yeah. I want to be really clear about that. That's that's not bad, especially for an exclusive in the first year of new hardware. Uh, this is, a, it's just one of those things. Like, this is going to click with some people, but I know people who, like, absolutely, they love, you know, Bethesda games. They really like Prey. 
but they didn't like Dishonored. They didn't like the stealth focus on it. I'm like, I really feel like this game, which encourages chaos, is something for you. Maybe not for me, because I really liked playing stealthily in Dishonored. It, it was the Splinter Cell I'll never get. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it, it's at this point, you know, you know what Arcane Leone is capable of doing. Dishonored, Dishonored 2, Death of the Outsider, like, you know what they're capable of doing. This is the next step in that evolution. I do hope they do something different from this formula for the next game, though. Yeah, That's my biggest takeaway from watching this is I'm tired of seeing this game. Please release it. If it gets delayed again, please don't shove it down my throat another time. Please yeah. don't. I understand I why you want to, <laughs> yeah. but please stop. Just if it got delayed stop. again, that would be a, that'd be a killer. That'd be... That'd be like, and no one would want to play this game at that point. Yeah. And and like, What's something wrong? that does give me hope for this is Machine Games did help out with the gunplay. Um, and I really liked hearing that, that them and uh, its division in Germany, they mm. both helped with the gunplay on this, which gives me a lot of hope. Because that Arcane Studio is the one that has not done gunplay before. Arcane Austin is the one that did Prey and is doing Redfall. So uh, okay. way more optimistic about that down there because that's their wheelhouse. I will always encourage teams trying something new. Deathloop does look like a new take on the Dishonored formula, but I can't help but be a little bit jealous and be like, could you have given me another Corvo story? I really like Corvo and Emily. Like, can I get another one? Just mm. just, a, just a little bit? Just a little? Give, give, give me some in-game lore relating to them and I'll be happy. All right, well... That's everything. Uh, so today's state of play uh, from from Sony, the July twenty twenty one state of play. Uh, I will say there were a lot of mixed uh, opinions about this one. Uh, it's <laughs> it, it, we we got we got what we wanted from Sony, but we also didn't get what we wanted at all. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense to you guys yeah. out there, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up uh, real quick. Let's go ahead and um, throw some plugs out there. Josh, you're the guest. You're the guest of the day. Uh, plug Damn. yourself. Ah. Uh. Every, every Friday afternoon, you can catch Tower Casuals on your podcast, Service of Choice. We talk Destiny. And every Monday, a new episode of Cueless, How I Met Your Mother. I'm doing that with our friend Logan. That's coming to an end very soon, though. And occasionally, you can find me on Trash Talk. And on Twitter, as always, at Josh underscore Finn. Two ends. Ed. You guys can find me on Twitter at Devretro Code. Check out Nintendo Poblock on Mondays and on BossRushGames.com. Check out some of my writings there. Um, optional opinion on SoundCloud and World One One Podcast at Popping.com. Right. Uh, uh, awesome. Find me at Place Dawson on Twitter. You can catch me on Crossroads, of course, but then you can also catch me on Land Party and Trash Talk. Uh, NFL preview starting now. We had Josh last week. We had Wes on the console gaming crew come on this week to discuss the NFC East. Uh, so go check all that out. And on Land Party, we talked about incest and who God knows what. We Jesus about. Christ. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, one last thing, everybody. Um, I am doing the state of play uh, recap. So you guys will be able to check that out on bushrushgames.com. Oh, yeah. oh, you're writing it? You write yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. All right. As always, you can find me on social media at Exodus803, E-X-O-D-U-S-803. That is, uh, take note, that is also my Twitch channel. That is also my YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget, Tuesday nights here at twitch.tv slash Exodus803, uh, Crossroads PlayStation Podcast with myself and Austin. And we can't wait for her to return. Nelly will be back soon. We miss you, girl. Um, and- yes. And uh, before we go, just if you have some free time, head over to BossRushGames.com and take a look at all the content BossRush has to offer. Uh, we're, I'm going to ask this question again to, to, uh, to the audience. Are, were you disappointed with the, with the new Nintendo Switch model? Because <laughs> there was a write-up about it, so go check that yes. out. Um, also, uh, also, don't forget about part two, of the, uh, part two of the 250th episode celebration for, uh, for Nintendo Power Block. And they're also Logan to the MLB power rankings recap for, for the month of June as well. So check all that out. Uh, attention. Uh, we would love to hear or see more from you at the boss rush games discord links have been provided in the chat for that as well. And uh, don't forget, hit us up over at PS underscore crossroads on Twitter. Uh, so where we here hold it down with more news events and gaming topics throughout the week as we get ready for the next show. Uh, the boss Rush games family wants you all to have a good evening. Go out there, play games, be better, get excited for some uh, for these 11 titles that we saw tonight for um, from PlayStation. And there you have it. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>